All right, the story of George Brett. I'll start with how he got his name. Um, I first got pictures of this deer in 2014. It was the summer of 2014. The landowner and I were both running cameras, and he got pictures of just a giant eight-pointer in velvet. Um, and he asked me if I knew the deer, and I was blown away. I didn't know who it was. Big eight, little drop tine on one side, just a really cool deer. And uh, we, we kept getting pictures of him rolling into September and, and during that velvet shedding period. And when he shed his velvet, it looked like from the bases up to the brow tines, it looked like they're just covered in pine tar. And so I'm a big baseball guy and that's where the name came from, uh, calling this deer George Brett. And I had a, a feeling that this deer was a four year old just kind of by looking at him um, that year, it was a 2014 fall. And I was going back and forth whether or not to hunt him. Typically I try to hunt five year old and older deer, but I wasn't 100% sure on this deer's age, and I've never really seen big eights like that. He had mass, he had a tine length, and he's very, very clean eight. Didn't look like he was gonna make a, a big jump. And I was, and so I decided to go ahead and hunt him, at least during the bow season up into the gun season. And if I didn't get him by then, I'd try to let him go and make it uh, to 2015. And I had a lot, had a blast hunting this deer. Had a lot of good encounters. Played cat and mouse with them for a while. And probably the most memorable memorable encounter was on November 11, 2014. Um, I was walking into a stand, kind of taking a break from hunting this deer. So I decided to hunt the other side of the farm and walking in the creek. And um, while I was walking in, I see this deer and another deer locked up, pinned against the ground. They tumble out in front of me in, in front of the creek and, and proceed to just battle it out it's kind of a fight to fight to the death type of battle and it was one of the most unreal experiences I've ever experienced in the woods just so cool to capture on camera and I just set my bow on the on the creek bank there and never even thought once about shooting this deer you know here this deer is I've been chasing all season he's right in front of me but I, I just I was too in awe of capturing the moment on film to even worry about shooting him so that was the most memorable encounter with George Brett that year um, obviously didn't catch up to him uh, as a four-year-old or what I thought was his four-year-old year. So fast forward one year, well, found his sheds that spring, um, found both sides. And into the fall of 2015, he spent a lot of time on the neighbors and didn't really uh, get many pictures of him, just occasionally he'd come over. And then as October got later, um, he, he moved over and I was starting to pick him up on camera a lot more often. So I was I was going all out. It was either George Brett or Bust that 2015 season. And uh, never once did see him from the tree stand except I was walking in one time, almost in the same area, literally 100 yards from where I filmed the fight and saw him running across the ridge, chasing a doe as hard as he possibly could. And that was the very last time I ever saw this deer. No trail cam pictures after that, no sightings after that. The neighbors didn't see him after that. And I kept hunting him all year long, but in the back of my mind, knowing I wasn't getting any pictures, I thought something had happened to him. I thought he got poached. I thought he was, you know, died in a fight. I, I didn't know. I just knew that he couldn't still be living where he had always lived, uh, just because he was non-existent on trail cam. So that brings us to the 2016 shed season, uh, February of 2016. Um, I come around the corner looking for sheds, and I see. Uh, this side sticking up off the ground. I knew right away what deer was. I sprinted over there and he, his rack was tangled in a fence and to this day I still don't know how he died. Um, it's always a bummer to see a deer go that way. It could have been he got shot by someone. He could have died, on a, died in a fight. There's a million different ways he could have died. Um, but either way it was, it was just such a, a fun journey chasing this deer. Uh, just a lot of cool history behind it and uh, not the way anyone would want it to end but I was glad that I, I was the one that found him after chasing him for multiple years and um, you know, I'm not one that uh, scores everything um, it's more about maturity for me and just the hunt itself but I do love know, knowing the score of a deer um, I think in this day and age of you know the harvest photos and stuff and making deer look big or small it's, it's always hard to really appreciate the size of a deer until you actually can put some inches on it um, and for that reason I love scoring all my deer it's just a, a cool way of knowing how many inches of antler uh, that you know that's the thing we're, we're fascinated with, with with these animals 
and uh, George Brett scored just uh, just that 180, 180 and 5 eighths. And buck score is a tool you can use, you know, whether you have a trail cam picture or harvest photo or whatever kind of picture you have, but it's a tool you can use to at least get you in the ballpark of, of how many inches of antler that deer has, what it scores. Um, so you can use that um, whether you're chasing the deer or you killed the deer. Um, it's pretty amazing how accurate it is. So that's the story of George Brett, uh, one of those chases that I'll never forget. Just such a cool journey, uh, multiple year journey, trying to figure this deer out, trying to pattern him. I learned so much, you know, he had some, some characteristics and some traits that I hadn't seen in other mature deer, so I learned a lot. And uh, even though it didn't end the way I wanted to, it's still a, a hunt that I'll never forget.